Hey guys, this is Torto and today we're going to be talking about two different things. The first one is these Heroes for Hire nerfs that are going to be coming in. Well, I don't know how to explain them. Nerfs, fixes, I mean they're straight up nerfs but they're also fixes to things. Uh, and then we've also got Silver Samurai obviously and then uh, when he's going to be coming out into the game finally. Plus I'm going to be talking about the Ravager rework. So the first one here is these uh, reworks slash nerfs to Heroes for Hire. So the first thing here was that they're going to be updating Misty Knight's passive. If you see at the moment she's meant to be getting uh, dodge per hero for higher allies so then she ends up with 25% dodge in total however it looks like they're going to be changing that to her gaining 5% max health which I don't think is a fair trade obviously um, they're basically saying look these guys are already incredibly powerful if we fix this then it's going to make them too powerful again potentially and make them more annoying so instead they're just going to be switching into the max health this one here I'm not so sure about like so Obviously, the way they're explaining it is, look, they're already really strong. If we fix this, they're going to be stronger. So many people are complaining about Heroes for Hire, um, but then so many people are complaining about characters not working the way they're meant to. I think the issue here is communication. This could be like a whole massive, like few paragraphs or a talk with the actual combat pod about it because this kind of little explanation here, I think isn't going to go down well with people. Like this is basically, oh, hey, they're strong. If we do this, then they're going to be over the top. But I think that's that, that, like more information, more in-depth um, kind of talking about this would be great and more communication overall as to this part here. At least that's my thoughts. I'm happy with the change. I'm okay with this change, but I think that it does need to be communicated more. The next one here is this all heroes for higher passive abilities. Uh, the text will be updated to clarify how their charge mechanic functions. At the start of any war, if they're on defense and has three or more allies, um, gain two charge on the spawn. So first of all, some of them don't gain two charge, they gain additional charges to that. Um, but this action occurs only once per war. This part here is basically bullshit. This part here is not happening currently. This is going to be a change in the functionality of them. At the moment, they basically, if they spawn here, uh, if this character has three or more allies, it's full health and not charge, gain charges. This part is not, oh, hey, gain charges if it's the first time or anything like that. If you happen to get rid of all of their charges and then spawn in again and their full health, then they'll gain their charges back. This is the design, uh, what they meant for it to be. When we talk to the combat pod, this is what they said that it was meant to be. That's what they talked about fixing the information about here. But I don't think that they realize that it's not functioning that way currently. At the moment, it's not this once per war thing or anything like that. It's every time they are full health and have zero charges, they will gain these charges. So that part here is going to be a pretty big nerf to them. Uh, it will make uh, clearing away uh, those mini kind of squads. Like when you get down to just like somehow you've managed to get down to just like Shang-Chi, Colleen and Misty left or something. It'll make clearing those easier because they're not going to gain their charges again, which is their major issue as well as obviously their high damage is their massive amount of charges and they're constantly kind of picking themselves back and coming back into the fight. So, I mean, I'm okay with this. Like I'm okay with this kind of change to them to make them less powerful. But again, it's not matching their actual descriptions. So that's kind of a big issue there. Um, they need to go in and actually change the functionality of the abilities to kind of match this if this is the case. And again, like these two parts here, this should not be something that's kind of tacked on to the end of this like post here. This should be big talks about what's going on and stuff uh, and then kind of passing it along to us. Um, something along the lines of, look, currently this is the way it's functioning. We're going to be updating it to do this because X, Y, Z. Um, and then even then the issue is that people have already spent so much on them and stuff. Like these characters, Misty, for example, came out ages ago. Shang-Chi most recently came out, but this part here has been affecting them since the original start um, characters. So I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys on this part of here. Like, this is the part that I think is most important um, and what's kind of going on there. 
All right, next up, Ravager Rework. So first of all, we had Silver Samurai came out. They had like these review here um, where he's kind of beating up a whole lot of dudes alongside the Weapon X and stuff, talking about his abilities, etc., 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 as they always do when new characters come out. Then um, down below here, they've posted, if this video gets enough thumbs up, the devs say that will rework Ravagers. So obviously they've made kind of a couple hints towards this previously, like a couple kind of screwings around and stuff. But when you combine that with the post that we found yesterday, um, the data mine that we found yesterday that was, hey, here's a Ravager rework potentially that's already being tested and stuff. This kind of gives it a lot more kind of oomph, a lot more um, potential going on there. Now, as for Silver Samurai, he's going to be having offers on Friday, and then the following Friday, he's going to be having his event campaign, so kind of keep that in the back of your mind. However, where to go back to this uh, Ravager rework here, potentially, if we have a look at the Ravager rework, I think that this could be a similar scenario to, Ni uh, to Nick Fury, where they're going to rework, um, except better, obviously, because when uh, Nick Fury is required for Omega Red, they didn't do any changes or anything like that to um, to the uh, the Kree minions or anything like that before he's now required. However, this is something that can come along to make it feel less bad going after Star Lord, because all of these guys are able to be used towards Star Lord uh, to be able to unlock Star Lord there. Grab these guys, then grab Gamora, and then there's your Star Lord. And Gamora, obviously, you kind of want anyway. And then using Star Lord towards a legendary, similar to how you've got Secret Avengers plus um, Fury and Bucky have something plus Star Lord, whether it's whatever. Like, I mean, these guys obviously they can choose whoever they kind of want to go alongside them. However, Star Lord's just became a um, like a universal permanent legendary. Nick Fury obviously is a permanent legendary already. Um, these guys getting a rework. Obviously, this rework is most likely to tie in with the Guardians of the Galaxy game that is coming out. Um, now, I don't know if the Ravage has actually been confirmed for it yet, but obviously, this is a game that they're kind of hyping up a lot if you guys remember the marvel avengers game was very a uh, very similar um they hyped up the marvel avengers game a lot i actually do enjoy it not that i really play it because i want to play it multiplayer and my wife doesn't really enjoy it however this game kind of coming out a lot of people really did enjoy it to begin with it had some clear issues however they hyped it up so much beforehand it came out september 4th 2020 and then just before that we had the avengers rework in marvel strike force so i believe that's similar to what's going to be happening here having a guardians of the galaxy kind of tie-in with a ravagers rework yondu obviously featured very heavily in the Guardians of the Galaxy typically, so it wouldn't surprise me if they do show up in this game. However, um, it depends on what information they've kind of given over to Marvel Strike Force, Marvel slash Square Enix kind of giving across to um, Marvel Strike Force. But obviously these guys kind of, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy game, most likely going to be super hyped up, um, kind of similar to Midnight Suns um, and the Marvel Avengers game, massive kind of tie-in, AAA games. Um, so having kind of Star-Lord kind of being featured in that and then have like a maybe a Guardians of the Galaxy rework later on or something. Um, and then have these guys required for Star-Lord, and then Star-Lord required for another Legendary. So, that's at least my thoughts, um, and that most likely means that there won't be a fifth character. When the Avengers came out, they all got reworks and uh, a lot of kind of touch-ups here and there. However, they never got a new character. They were literally just designed to be this kind of free rework that helped out new players and stuff. And having like a, a villain team as that, I think is a good idea. And these guys are a kind of good villain team that's early game, so they can kind of be your cosmic team, your partial mystic team, partial kind of tech and bio as well. Um, a lot of characters here that would be really good. So hopefully they don't come with a new character and they're just kind of like this um, this rework that's happening to kind of tie into the Guardians of the Galaxy game and then kind of using Star-Lord for the next legendary. Um, but I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about this and what you think about these Misty Knight Heroes for Higher changes. A lot of stuff going on there. Um, but that's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.